This is one year of creating 3D environments. And this is 10 years of creating 3D environments. Let's see what changed. To celebrate the 10 year anniversary of this channel, which is so easy to say, but <laughs> even harder to imagine, I figured that it would be a fun challenge to recreate my first environment that I posted here with some updates. Now with the recreated version, I didn't want to sway away too far from the original design, but I still wanted to utilize the fact that I'm recreating this with new skill sets. And also I always felt that the first version was a little bit cramped up with the river. So I kind of wanted to go a little bit more broad, almost like a lake instead of a river. I still want to keep a similar time of day and lighting setup so I don't go too far off from the design. And also one uh, big limit that I had in my first original video is the fact that I made it in, I think it was one hour that I gave myself. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do myself a favor and give myself two hours. So I won't be too far off, but still get a little bit more time. Since then, I've of course gotten better in general, but I think the main things that I learned more about is 3D lighting. I've put a lot of time and effort into learning that part of it. And just recently I picked up more 3D modeling so I actually got myself Blender <laughs> and finally got myself through some tutorials and really got myself into like the actual process of doing 3D models. And it was quite fun but I also wanted to use those skills and put myself to the test so to speak and see how much I remember from the tutorials. No, I, I mean I'm not just trying to memorize everything right, I just want to learn kind of what they do in tutorials and Blender Guru's tutorials have actually helped a lot so I'm gonna use one of his house models as an inspiration for this design. Inspiration, guys, in air quotes. <laughs> so I just started off via Blender. I didn't really even set myself any given dimensions for the house. I didn't really research that part. I just chucked in a uh, base human model, a male. And based off of that, I just kind of wanted to go with my gut and incentives in terms of the scale of the house. So I just kind of wanted to put together a foundation where I can then start detailing on top of it. I wanted to create the actual side panels instead of only relying on texturing and normal maps. So I went ahead and <clears throat> got inspired to create these side panels that I could use for my house. It's actually kind of wild seeing how all of these different modifiers inside Blender work. Like setting up an array modifier for the side panels and then seeing each piece just kind of stack up with no manual labor is quite amazing. With a boolean modifier, I made sure that they don't actually extend over the roof of the house. I was having some trouble setting this up actually because the side panels started cutting off in a weird pattern and I realized that the issue was actually actually because for the base cube of the house that I put together, not the actual side panels, but just the part of the mesh that I cut off and separated from the base cube to create the roof, I just separated it and that resulted in the array and the boolean modifier especially not working properly because they were all based off of the base house model, which again was a cube that I started off with. So lessons learned. Uh, I went back and recreated the house actually and made sure that the base cube does have a roof this time. I wanted to use the Archimesh plugin for putting together some doors and the windows and other props for the house. They really make it easier. They even come with a built-in boolean modifier, which means that you can cut off pieces of the wall panels. There might be some tricks, which I'm still trying to figure out. And I think this is something you learn through the years. And not just years of creating stuff, but just years of using these types of tools and plugins. There is almost always an easier way of doing something, especially if the tool or the plugin that you're using has been around for a while. And in the case of Blender, I almost always find a shortcut or a workaround or an easier way of doing something where I thought originally that I would have to do it manually. So saying that, I'm also going to add a piece of feedback for myself. I'm still placing the windows manually. I don't know if there's a way to snap them automatically onto the wall pieces, but hey, th th that's not a problem. You know what I mean? Like that's not an actual issue. Just the fact that we have Archimish actually makes it so much easier to do all of this. I wanted to add like a small front porch or like a terrace where I have the floor level of the house and then a small roof on top of it. And the small roof would of course be supported by some pillars so I started by adding them. And then underneath the roof I wanted to have additional support pieces so I tilted the edges of these small cube pieces that I added and then attached them to the roof. And once again here, uh, using the array modifier and the mirror modifier, I could easily just duplicate the various support pieces. So including for the pillars, I just use a mirror modifier, precisely placing the support pieces where I want them to be. 
It's amazing, man. I, I love Blender. I actually really enjoy using it. I'm sure many of the other 3D tools and programs are like this for 3D modeling specifically. But I have a feeling that in game development, there are just so many things that you do that the game engines are very monolithic, meaning it's way too broad. It's way too many features in there that that's supported and you can do all these wild things but for very specific use cases like 3d modeling you just don't really have a lot of these types of modifiers or effects that you can apply to your meshes before we finish the block out for the house i just want to go ahead and add some stairs because in my vision of this house i want people to be able to walk down and get to the lake right there and i want to have a path right in front of the house so i want the stairs to naturally connect to where the terrain or the landscape ends and this is going become more clear once we get into Unreal and what I'm trying to do here is just once again putting a block out so that I know what I envision but then I put it to the test when I actually open up Unreal and see if this is realistic one but two more importantly is this actually what I want to do once I have the final design in. Going over to Unreal, I wanted to start off by putting together a base for the scene. So I started off with a landscape and then immediately put my house model into the test. And you'll realize that even the windows and the doors aren't really added to my house yet because I don't really care too much about the details at this point. I just want to test it out in Unreal and see how it looks when I put together a landscape. Using a ramp for the landscape, by the way, I'm able to sculpt. So instead of manually sculpting and brushing over and over again, I just kind of wanted to put together a ramp from the beginning so that I can get a base height level. And then from there, I started smoothing out the terrain, sculpting a little bit additionally, and continue by adding a water plane or like a placeholder plane for water so that I can further try to sculpt my terrain and landscape based off of that. Now, once again here, what's important is that I just have my vision. I just have my idea and also the base, the first original design that I actually created, which I'm still looking at while working on this. But again, I had some feedback for myself that I wanted to fix for my first design. So I kind of wanted to go for a broader area given the water scale. So I started sculpting the landscape knowing this, where I kept considering that maybe I just go for a lake, but I just basically I leave enough room for being able to go for a lake but then I can just immediately undo it and turn to a river instead. Plot twist, we actually went for a lake, by the way. <laughs> That's what we did. Uh, it just felt more natural. It just felt more nice with the house model that I had in hand. I think if I had gone for a bit more wooden or log style house, then I could have made the setup of a river work nicely. But for a house like this, it just felt so right with the lake setup. We're then going to go ahead and enable the plugin in Unreal for adding water, which works super nicely, by the way. It just kind of works out of the box. I only modified a little bit of the absorption color for the water, which, by the way, I do want to create a tutorial video for how I'm using the water plugin, just to kind of cover all of the material properties and the parameters you can change. I'm also going to get started by adding some foliage, starting off with just some base grass that I got from Quixel Megascans. Of course, now we're using Fab. Fab Marketplace, which is the hot new version of it. It works nicely though. I mean, of, of course, it's still very early on and all of the Quixel mega scans haven't really transferred over yet. But as a built-in solution, you can still use the Quixel mega scans, add something to your library in Fab, which is just by the click of a button. So it's not that difficult after all. And then inside of Fab, you just go ahead and import it into your project. So it's not that difficult. It's just that the intended solution is not in yet. We'll go ahead and add the textures that we want to use for the landscape as well. And for this, once again, I'm just using Quixel Mega Scans because it just makes my life so much easier. I'm going to add three different textures, two of which are moss. So just a tiny bit of difference in shading for the different moss textures where one of them is a little bit brighter. And I'm using two different moss textures just to kind of give a bit of variety so that it doesn't just repeat itself continuously. And then one other texture, the third one, is a bit more of like a mud type of color where it's really dark, really foresty type of texture. And I want to use this one mainly for the path, but I of course don't want to have a full intensity where it switches immediately. I just kind of want to have a transition, like a nice little transition between them. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll also know that I love putting together a camera set up from very much the get-go. So immediately as soon as I start placing the foliage and painting the textures a little bit, I got myself a cinematic camera. So <laughs> my only intent with this is not to really put the final shot, of course, that's going to change a little bit, but I just want to get an idea of what the camera should be looking at, how far it should be from the house. 
All right, part three. Uh, I messed up the <laughs> pictures of the house. As you can see, we have a incredibly glossy house, uh, which looks interesting, least to say. So what I did is I started off adding the textures inside of Blender, which didn't really make sense now that I think back to it. But you know, I'm I'm new, guys. Don't. <laughs> I mean, the reason why I added them in Blender was to number one challenge myself so that I can learn even further how to actually use Blender and its texturing capabilities. But I also figured it would be easier to export the model with the textures. Right Right into Unreal and just it just works out of the box. But then inside Unreal, when setting up all of the normal textures and the glossiness and smoothness, it just didn't really work like I wanted it to. So I decided to take it back and just set up the materials inside of Unreal, which makes more sense, by the way, because that is the final destination. That's where you're going to use the model eventually. When adding grass, I nowadays follow a set of rules, basically, that I set for myself, which is that the grass on the edges, I leave them a little a bit shorter than the grass in the center pieces or the center parts and I make patches of grass in this case I actually used three different types of grass and then I had two variants of different bushes I'm also adding some foliage very very short and patchy grass to the path that the people are supposed to walk on so I want that texture underneath the grass to really strike because remember we added the darker texture to make it look a bit more separated so with a bit of grass too I want to make sure that it doesn't look bald or too empty but that it still follows the pattern of the overall scene but it just has way shorter grass of course this goes hand in hand with painting the actual pathway so changing the the textures of the landscape, sculpting it still, making room for the stairs of the house that we added, and then adding vegetation along the curves and along the lines to make sure that there is some type of consistency within the scene. And then you'll have certain odd behaviors, which I'm also trying to artificially produce here by not painting all of the grass at the same level, making sure that some of the odd pieces stick out into the water, and removing some height from the grass along the stairs, for instance, to make it look like it's been cut and maintained. To add some more deformation into the landscape, I'm adding some rocks that are further embedded within the ground. And you can see that I'm changing the scale as I go. And I'm even adding some darker ones, which I actually end up removing towards the end because I decided that it looks out of the place. You want to make sure that you do make it consistent, but also not pitch perfect because nothing is really perfect. But then still, for instance, some rocks just didn't feel like they fit the scene. So it just didn't make sense for me to have them in a biome like this. So I just decided to remove them. And you'll see that I use grass, general foliage, as well as the rocks that I'm adding that are further into the ground to shape the lines across the water shore because I don't want it to look fully empty. I mean, it's not a beach at the end of the day, right? It's still a sort of a foresty type of lake house. So that's why I'm extra detailed on the deformities with the rocks and just adding general details like that. In the last part, I really put the focus on adding materials to the house. So I resolved all of the issues with the glossiness of the house textures. I made sure that the normal maps work perfectly fine. And I just basically re-imported some of the textures to ensure that it all works with each other. I chose a black design for the rims of the windows and the door pieces because I didn't really want to go for more wooden textures. I wanted to add a bit of a modern touch to complement all of the wood that we used for the house, given the feeling that with its big panels of windows and darker colored rims for the windows and the doors, it, it's still a newly built house. Adding the final touches with the grass too, I decreased the size of my brush by a lot and just wanted to make sure that I paint along the lines of the paths that I built into the scene so that the grass doesn't feel like it just cuts off from a certain part of the environment, but it still grows on parts that are unmaintained and not so much walked upon or interacted with by the people living in the house. I also added some chairs from Quixel and a small table right on top of that small porch on the front side of the house to make it look a bit more lively. And instead of sculpting a whole mountain or a hill in the background, I decided to use a pre-made asset. I like the variation in color because the general color scheme of the scene is very green, combining the green of the water with the grass and some of the trees surrounding the house. But then you look really at the house because it really grabs your attention with its wooden textures and given that the sun shines directly onto the house. So I wanted the viewer's attention to go directly to the house so you, you don't get confused on what to look at. But then the mountains in the background, 
especially when I position them right behind the house, combined with a little bit of fog and depth of field, it really added to the scene. Because this is one thing that I learned over the years, and it might sound obvious when you say it, but I, I think it's harder to do in practice. Leaving certain parts of your environment empty looks great and it actually makes sense like for instance the grassy hills that are immediately behind the house makes sense from a logical perspective right it just looks natural it doesn't look artificial but if i left the mountain bits empty as well with no trees with no elevation with nothing in the background that sticks out for an environment like this it would look a bit unnatural because it would give a feeling of an island and then you would be expecting more of like sandy type of colors and the rocks to be sandy as well and that's pretty much it so this is how we went from a scene that looked like this initially with just a cube and a random man <laughs> all the way to a finished vision of the house of the lake house that we wanted to build as an aim to rework and modernize the uh, the, the first design that I made which which still holds a special place in my heart right it's it's your first design you always as much critique as you would hold towards your own creations you still have a I, I don't know it's just kind of like an emotional binding that you have to these pieces and they just hold a special spot in your heart but it's also fun right going back and looking at what you've created in the past and seeing all of the faults in air quotes analyzing some of the mistakes and then comparing it to how much you've grown and learn new things and the new techniques that you know now is a very interesting way to improve your own gratitude too i think as a technical artist or a 3d artist or as a developer in general because as creatives i think we need those periods in time where we go back in time and just take a look at what, where we used to be and then taking a look at and living inside of the current where we're able to do many things that we weren't able to do before so i'll leave you with that i'll leave you with a, uh, <laughs> a kind of an inspirational Quote there but seriously I, I challenge you guys to actually do the same because I keep doing this every now and then just to kind of take inspiration from my past designs and going into the current and being like okay how would I solve this issue if I did it now and this doesn't only go for environment design I do the same thing with programming challenges or past tutorials that I made just kind of to block it out in my mind and be like okay how would I approach this now and what has changed since then it's very helpful to me at least in uh, figuring out you know how far we come but also where else I want to put my focus on the in the next period of time so with that being said I'm gonna end it here but thank you so much for watching I missed making videos I, I know this is a cliche thing for me to say in the past few videos now but I definitely missed making videos my aim for 2024 was to restart it's it feels weird or odd to say restart but restart the channel basically and also start producing some games and producing some more quality content so my goal with the channel is that right now I don't necessarily have a specific particular topic that I'm going to focus on but I think environments 3d art 3d design and game projects in general are very interesting to me because that's where I that's what I grew up with literally so I want to put my focus there with that being said if you have any ideas or suggestions for videos please do let me know I'm all ears as you already know I'm going to be in the comment section so I'll see you guys there have a good one peace out